Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode. This is PSYOP free. Everything we're going to tell you today is facts as we know it, truth as we know it. We, you, you know us, man. This Red Pill Thamilis. Uh, we're trying to be as objective as possible. Way more objective than propaganda CNN because they done got caught. I don't know if y'all, if y'all don't know by now, but they done got busted. Uh, I am your host, Chingo Bling, the ghetto vaquero, the tamale kingpin, the Versace mariachi, the masa messiah. And we have producer Rob in the building. Good morning, everybody. Or good evening, whenever you're listening to this. Yeah, we don't know what you're doing while you're listening to this. But uh, let me hit y'all with some tour dates real quick before we get into all the stuff man we we talking about so much stuff i just got back from arizona from attending a turning point usa event can't wait to tell you all about that mm -hmm. but freedom of speech tour get all your tickets right now chinglebling.com do not get sold out corpus christi we are coming may 20th through the 22nd ontario california july 14th oxnard california july 15th irvine california august 11th denver colorado august 27th through the 29th h-town september 23rd through the 26th, and so much more. Dallas, Texas, San Antonio, all that. Get more info, chingobling.com. <sighs> but now. But now. Brrr. So just got back from uh, Arizona. Uh, I think I got a little dehydrated. Yeah, yeah, you were saying that last night. What gave you that inclination? Was it, this, you, was it jet lag feeling? Was it like tired feeling? That too. It was all of that. Because we landed like at one in the morning uh, when we got back home. Uh, while we were out there, we were having to get up early still and, uh, you know, just traveling kicks your ass. And then I, I don't have hair on my head. So when you're out there in the desert waiting on an Uber, that sun just be cooking your brain, bro. How was that experience? Because I've heard a lot of horror stories right now about waiting for Ubers considering the whole, you know, COVID thing in certain certain cities. Well, I don't know what it was due to, but um, the Uber situation near that resort where they have the, uh, se llama? the uh, Turning Point USA mm -hmm. thing at the uh at that resort it was just you had to wait man like we had this bright idea of going to get in and out burger with uh jesse the founder of lexit anna paulina and uh and patty uh jesse's homegirl a uh, man vice president so we went to in and out burger and we're like hey you know we're smart let's call uber now so that by the time we're done eating we're good to go and we can all get back because jesse still had to speak and anna still had to speak so we couldn't mess that up. Man, the Uber would cancel right when they show, like right when they're about to show, they'd cancel. It's like, oh, we waited 20 minutes for nothing. Fuck. And uh, one person had Lyft on the line. Somebody else had Uber. Somebody else had Uber. So it was a fucking fiasco. They must have uh, seen where you were going. Like, no, we're not helping them. Like, yeah. We're trying to help you keep your job, guy. Yeah, I don't know, brother. But um, but it was really cool, man. Turning Point, I didn't. I didn't know much about Charlie Kirk. Yeah, let's set the point. let's set the whole uh, picture for him because this was like a last minute thing, wasn't it? like it was yeah. relatively to the trip day. It was pretty recent that they, you got invited or both of y'all got invited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Turning Point USA put together this. Uh, apparently, they have these seminars or whatever conferences mm -hmm. all the time. This one was the Young Latino Leadership Summit. Uh, Marisol and I were invited to attend, and um, they had a variety of speakers. They had Ted Cruz. They had like. Uh, the first Latina governor from New Mexico, um, Ana Paulina spoke. She ran for Congress. Um, Jesse Olguin, founder of Lexit. Uh, first of all, he killed it with his speech, bro. He told his testimony. He told his story of his past. And, man, I'll tell you, bro, he got a standing ovation. Everybody got chills. Everybody got goosebumps. It was, And he even got some laughs. He got some applause breaks. I mean, he killed it and um it, it was cool to hang out with him pick his brain and just you know chill with that crew and meet so many people man there were some youngsters out there this one kid he was 15 years old they're from bakersfield and his homeboy's 17 they're still in high school they're already like interning for senators uh the 15 year old says i'm just waiting till i turn 25 i'm running for congress i, I told him i was like bro i wasn't shit when i was 15 <laughs> I was like, I, my, I didn't know, I wasn't thinking about none of that. I wasn't thinking about no, maybe I had like an internship or I might have been volunteering somewhere, little stuff like that, but. But I wasn't mean, it like radio related? Weren't you doing that no, kind of internship? Or what no, kind of internships were you doing? I, I worked at a hospital. I did a um, volunteer work at a hospital. Um, I also interned for a judge here in uh, Houston. Little shit like that when I didn't know if I was going to be on some lawyer shit, some doctor shit, but I went into the talking mm. shit. <laughs> I went into shit talking. But I didn't know much about Charlie Kirk and Turning Point. All I knew was 
Charlie Kirk is this dude that um, kicks it with Candace Owens and Turning Point. They go on college campuses and they try to um, present some ideas such as, you know, capitalism, socialism sucks, big government sucks, uh, things of that nature, right? And they're doing a great job because their posters, their slogans, their art, everything, all the people that are working there are like super young. Uh, we went to their headquarters. Um, they're making content. They're podcasting. Charlie Kirk has a podcast. And the reason the left is so threatened by them is because their ideas are popular once people get to kind of sit and listen. Mm -hmm. Once you take Trump and his tweets out of the equation, once you, oh, yeah, well, didn't he say grab him by the pussy? He said, they let me grab them by the <laughs> pussy. Big difference. Because I'm a billionaire. There's, Big a, there's a huge difference. Think about it. There, people always use that. I don't know if you see that, Rob. I don't know if you like to get in arguments and shit on, online like me. But people love throwing that one. God forbid, Chingo, you have daughters. What if some mean, evil, orange man like Trump grabs them by the private parts? And I'm like, uh, Trump said, they let me. That's consent. They let me grab them by the <laughs> so. Also, that kind of like over, that glosses over the fact that if you got power and you got money, doors open for you, opportunities open for you, whether you like the way that they go down or not, that's just what it is. Almost like saying or ne like neglecting the fact that if you're a beautiful woman, you might have more power than anybody in the mm -hmm. fucking world, right? Yeah. It's just the way it is. Yeah, and speaking of that, while we were at that resort. If you're a troll, you're not getting those same opportunities. Yeah, exactly. So when we were at that resort, man, they have this, this pool area and yeah. this big, beautiful bar. Ooh, tell me and, in detail. And, and Arizona, Arizona is beautiful. Arizona has so much to offer as long as you stay hydrated and some shade. I mean, Wear a hat. I mean, it's beautiful. They got so much golf and golf. I don't even play golf, but I'm like, damn, I might want to pick that shit up. So you started seeing these little sugar babies, these little, you know, beautiful women posted up next to these old dudes that are there probably retired or at the resort or uh, just there to play golf or there for a conference and they're just hey you know they're oh shit oh chit chat oh i love your gray hair old man oh your belly's cute <laughs> and they just buying them drinks and i'm like everybody was watching everybody that was over there chit chatting people from the conference are like man look at them man they're over there trying to get that bag they're over there finessing these old men. Hell yeah. And I was like, y'all better be quiet. This might be Project Veritas trying to set up. That dude might work for CNN. Y'all don't interfere with this shit. This might be a Tinder date uh, a la Charlie Chester. That's a great point. So, but but anyway, I, I digress. Yeah. Turning Point USA, uh, props to them. They're a nonprofit. Uh, they're getting the word out. You know, they're, they're getting a lot of resistance uh, on these college campuses because these are indoctrination centers. So a lot of us, I mean, me included, were just brainwashed to think that anybody from the right is just, no, they're bigots. They only care about the old white men and, and the big corporations and, and the Democrats are the good guys. They care about the, the poor and the minorities and they're the diverse ones and they want to give back and they want to help us. But, you know, these folks, they, they look at it totally different. They're like, look, man, capitalism and these policies are just better. It's just going to help you succeed it's just a better system it just makes more sense mm -hmm. it's more fair and balanced and you know one thing i really don't like about the left man is um just the amount of propaganda like i can't wait to talk about the um the january 6th thing did you hear about that one about the cops actually dying from or the cop that died from a stroke yeah so so basically the the should we get into that now or did you have a, a flow? No, there's absolutely no, there's never a flow here, right? Okay. I, I want you to go off what's off the top of your head. So so we'll just we'll just pivot into this January 6th thing. Sure. So basically the propaganda that the left was running was basically these crazy Trump mob killed a police officer. There were stories that were unchecked, unsourced, just they allowed them to run with it. Uh, uh, he had allergic reaction to some bear mace because these Trumpers, these Trump and Zs, these Trumpies went up in there with bear mace and, and this poor officer and they used his death to, as a toy, like as a prop. They just exploited this man and his family and they ran with this narrative, even though his family was like, yep. well, I spoke to him that night and I think it was because of a stroke. His own mama was like, uh, it was because of a, it was a series of strokes. And of course, people on the left is like, it's because of the stress from what happened on the deadliest day, January 6th, the insurrection, it caused the strokes to come about. It's like, 
Are we not going to consider medical history? Are we not going to consider medical history? And the Rasa is so brainwashed because they, they're all up on my Twitter comments. It's because they stressed him out and that's why the strokes. It's like, damn, y'all love the white liberal. <laughs> Dude, it's so funny because in some of the comments, it'll be like, uh, there's just no more reasoning behind Chingo Bling. I'm like, no reasoning? On which uh, which post? I, um, dude, all of them maybe. I think this was on IG particularly, but you can go through all of them, right? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And it's the common theme of just, if you really don't have a lot of insight into the whatever topic the post was about, it's there's no more, there's no uh, reasoning behind this man. Like what happened to whatever, right? Whatever common insult you might hear. Mm-hmm. And it kind of, it, it bums you out because you're like, man, if you just read the thing we post maybe or went to go research the thing that we posted, you would see that there's more justification for that being uh, factual versus what you probably saw, you know, Rachel Maddow talk about or fucking Trevor Noah talk about on The Late Show. I don't know, but mm-hmm. go on. No, 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 man. That's a good point, man. And um, they were also false stories that they bludgeoned him to death he had a gash on his head he later died because they hit him with a fire extinguisher how is the mainstream media allowed to just run with a fake story now let me tell y'all this a lot of y'all know me as chingo bling the rapper the comedian he does stand up he does skits he does canelo he does all his random voiceovers and he's a silly dude mexican dude they can't deport us all okay some of y'all might be like why is he going in on this Red Pill Tamales podcast, week after week after week, episode after episode, hating on the propaganda, hating on the media, and it's because y'all should be, y'all should be really alarmed. All the people, radio DJs, people I know from the industry, jumping in my comments, Chingo, they killed a cop. No, the only person that died that day was Ashley Babbitt, one of the protesters, unarmed, female. She was, you know, going up in the, into that room and they shot her. I guess they did what they had to do, right? But they tried to turn it into these people are cop killers. And they even used that fake story, amongst other fake stories, during Trump's second impeachment. Like, this is all this, pretty much everything that they were bringing as evidence was doctored, mm-hmm. Photoshop. It was a hoax. And they were using the fine people hoax, the drink bleach hoax. Now they're using this, they killed a cop hoax. Everything was a hoax. And I, I feel like I'm talking to the Rasa till I'm blue in the face. And they trust the white liberal yeah. so much. They trust CNN so much. They trust Univision Telemundo. They trust the mainstream narrative so much. And thankfully, you have these new outlets like this, um, this new thing that just popped off called, uh, I think it's El American, like mm. El Americano or something like that. It's a new, like, they're, they're countering what Univision and Telemundo are oh, doing. Oh, really? So they're trying to deprogram los Latinos from this mainstream media narrative that they'll, they'll give you a hoax and then they'll just fucking, you know, retra- retract it later and a little small footnote in the New York Times and lying like a motherfucker. And then, I mean, bro... And it was, uh, Malcolm X was the one that said, a white liberal is the most dangerous thing. Mm-hmm. So let's remember that. Let's, yeah, let's let, go back let, to see why he said that. And that might be why we also don't have Malcolm X Day in America. But look here. Rest in peace to this uh, officer. I mean, he died of natural causes. Uh, even though Latinos got the white man liberals, uh, Chile, so deep down their throat that they're going to bend over backwards for the white liberal. They will bend over backwards for the mainstream media. They, they, probably, they probably can't wait to go buy some Ben and Jerry's ice cream. They can't wait to defund their police. They can't wait to start Latino Lives Matter. That, that'll never happen. I don't think there's enough. I mean, maybe there is. Maybe there's enough brainwash raza to, to do something like that. But I don't put it past them. No. I, I, bro, you come on, man. There's a ton of you got all your Chicano studies people, you got all your Latinx people, you got all these millennials, you got all these Latino kids in college getting indoctrinated. Um, I mean, they tried to do it with Vanessa. They tried to turn Vanessa Guillen's tragic death and try to turn it into a Latino Lives Matter vote Democrat. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, somebody jumped in my comments one time, Selena would disown you because you voted for Trump. And I had to remind them. Selena would be, let's just say, about 50 years old, multi-millionaire, uh, very religious, conservative. She's, she's been on record. Uh, she was on record uh, 
pro-life mm-hmm. very pro-life that one recently started going around again the pro-life interview she did or you know talking about not being anti-abortion yeah so so she's pro-life millionaire from texas and you telling me she was gonna vote for biden yeah your goddamn mind you don't know damn idiots anyway you know i come in here <laughs> with, my, with my blood pressure high and shit because early in the morning yeah because i'm just gonna say this man i don't know how many years it's gonna take rob for this turning point to happen for yeah. this for this tipping point for people to have their aha moment you know it might be this hoax it might be the next it might be the next i don't know which hoax that they're gonna see debunked is gonna have them slowly starting to open their eyes so for example they called us Neanderthals. They called Mississippi, you know, they're crazy for uh, removing the mask. They, they talk shit about Texas for removing the mask. They can't stand Governor DeSantis and, and Florida and how free they are and the liberties. They want us to be like Oregon. They want us to be like New York and California. Everything's shut down. They want us to be like Canada, like living under tyranny. And they talk so much shit about Texas removing the mask, but our cases went down. Yeah. And of course... The brown liberal who loves the white liberal. They will jump in front of the white liberal to defend his narrative. No, 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 Chingo. It's because they're not testing as much anymore. No, 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 no. All those people at Texas Stadium surely have died by now. That was a super spreader event. No, 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 Chingo. Three masks are good. There, there's so much evidence. There's a dude named Steve Cortez got kicked off of um, Twitter because he cited a Stanford University... Uh, National Institute of Health study that pretty much showed that masks, you know, arguably could be counterproductive. They're dirty. They don't really work. You know, things that Rob mm-hmm. has been saying. And I always try to give the benefit of the doubt. Like, well, you know, in theory, as a risk management system, does it, you know, could it prevent droplets from, from you know, shooting across some, you know, in someone's face or whatever? But this dude, Steve Cortez, got got. Uh, kicked off Twitter for a little while, locked out, because he cited a Stanford University National Institute of Health study that said masks don't work. So you got big tech colluding with this fucking narrative. Meanwhile, Texas, Mississippi, Florida are proving that oxygen is kind of good for you and sunlight and don't be obese. And and if you're elderly, then, you know, lay low and all those kinds of things. But, you know, the brown liberal will jump in front of a bullet for the white liberal. Which is really bizarre to me. I know there's a subsegment of brown, uh, just any Latinos that would, like you said, take a bullet for the white liberal. But I feel like if you're from, or if you're like first generation, or your mother, father, or both are from Mexico, a lot of the people I do have, it's probably, I would say 50-50. So it shouldn't be that shocking that they they side with, you know, Telemundo and Univision only. And then there's the other half. And now come to think of it, the other half that doesn't, their families have a construction business or have a small business of sorts, you know, that maybe just from that alone pushes them a little bit more, you know, center right, right? And then the values that they're instilled by a business, uh, an immigrant business owning family being religious and family first and all that pushes the kid even a little bit further right, maybe conservative value wise. It, it just shocks me how many still more Latino liberals out there would take a bullet for these white liberals and side with that. Pro lockdown, I mean, pro mask, pro they, everything, bro. Like pro lockdown, and even just when it comes to narratives, like whether it's George Floyd or Little Homicide from Chicago, we oh, gonna, yeah, we're gonna talk Baby about Diablo. That. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Um, you know this this Officer Skolnick who died of natural causes, the brown liberal ready to jump in front of the bullet for the white liberal. No, 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 no. What you mean? No, it was the stress that yeah. caused the later the next day he died or the trans you know ma- trans female in or trans fuck whatever the term is in women's sports like mm-hmm. that, that's another argument that i don't i don't i just don't get why you're so hardcore on that side where they should be allowed to play like basically shattering any p- history of women's achievements in sports mm-hmm. like just like oh, no fuck that i would argue that there's a large percentage of latinos that vote democrat mm-hmm. that don't really connect the dots i don't think they look deep into wait wait i just voted for the party that is destroying women's sports Mm -hmm. they don't i don't know how many of them connect the dots like hey bro do you know what side you're on do you know what you're voting for like do you know do you know all the shit biden is doing in terms of like you know operation talon that trump set up to 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 really um 
punish human traffickers and things like that. He just undid the whole thing. And, and then there was a restriction on the amount of studies they can do on human fetal tissue. Mm -hmm. There were some restrictions <clears throat> on that. Joseph Breezy came in and said, nah, go in, do your thing. Like, let's make half monkey, half humans for organs and shit. A little half monkey, half humans. They're, they're going to take the organs out their body and mm. stuff like that. Um, well, it's so easy to just go off of the, the, the title, right? To go off of the clickbaity title and maybe like the first paragraph in whatever the article is without reading the rest of it. I understand completely. It, it can get to the point where you want to be educated on it, but it's so boring sometimes. You're like, fuck it, I'm going to run with this narrative along with the CNN and the rest of the mainstream media, and I'm just going to start posting about it. I'm going to attach myself to that ideology, and I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to pick this side, and that's my side because I'm a little too lazy to read the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Trevor Noah is a perfect example of that I was just watching videos of him talking about the transports thing. Cited the transports, tr uh, transports. Thing. Oh, trans. Yeah, sports. Got <laughs> transports. Yeah, where are we transporting him to? Out of the country. Just kidding. Uh, he cites this article right and just reads the first paragraph that that kind of proves his point of like there's only one case uh, in the last whatever many years of of a, of a guy beating a woman. In that same paragraph, there were 15 other examples, I guess, a dozen other examples of of the other way around. But anyway, I digress. There's, um, and I, I totally forgot the thought I was going to go with, but it, it has to do with, again, the, the brown Latin liberal just being lazy and not, not going all the way. And we're trying to do our best here to like present more of like the full picture so you can make your own opinion of it. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it's kind of like, again, you're, it's like talking to a wall a lot of the times, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and I will say this, many, 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 many people argue, many people on the right argue that Fox News it's just controlled opposition, that they're not even really conservative. They just kind of cherry pick, um, you know, whatever little stance they want to take. But they're not really conservative. They just kind of are, are controlled opposition, right? So I throw that in there just because some people might interpret our CNN bashing mm -hmm. as, oh, these motherfuckers just got brainwashed by Fox. And they just think anything Tucker Carlson says is true. But uh, um, Bill Maher... He keeps going viral every week with these segments he drops on his show. The most recent one, I want to do a screen grab so bad, but I know that um, Instagram will kick it off because it belongs to HBO. But uh, if you guys get a chance, it's on YouTube. It's uh, Bill Maher talking about, this is what he said. He said, everybody from like the, the news propaganda, the politicians, like so many people were benefiting from the um the crisis porn the the uh basically oh, the scaring us yeah. yeah fear porn scaring us about covid stuff and it was an excellent it was an excellent segment even though he did throw in there the uh, drink bleach hoax because that motherfucker probably still believes trump said drink bleach but anyway he was, can't let some things go he, but he was nobody fact checked his motherfucking ass but anyway he was calling out the left bro he was saying look at the percentage of democrats Man, can we just? Can you I? You want to play it? You got let it. Let me just play a segment. Sure. Um, it's and while you're uh -huh. pulling that up, uh, if I'm not mistaken, earlier this week there was an, there's another hoax that had to be retracted, and that was the uh, the Russians put bounty bounties on American soldiers, <sighs> bro. And it's just like how and they're still and actually after that was being kind of debunked, released, retracted. Maybe not an hour later, MSNBC ran another full story on how, no, it is true. It's not, it, it isn't being retracted by the media. It, it did happen. We have the sources. And the source, from, if I'm not mistaken, was a captured Taliban member that, would, that just made the story up that the Russians had put bounties on American soldiers. And, and, and even, Trump didn't say anything about it. He knew about it for months. Okay. Not true. Even then, even then. Okay. So, a rumor that... Uh, Russians had put a bounty on the head of American soldiers that Trump knew about for months. Yeah. So they already probably don't like us. So they probably already want to take out some of our soldiers. So why would I need a rumor to act, act differently? In other words, you, you stirring up a pot. It's like, if I got beef with a motherfucker and you coming in and be like, Hey man, that motherfucker don't like you. It's like, yeah, cause I got beef with him and I already know. Right. So it's like, Fuck your bullshit narrative. So before he plays real quick, yes. and we'll go back to it probably after, the, the, the other point I was going to make too with the, our you know fellow Latinos that are lazy and don't read the whole thing or look into the whole thing, I watched about an hour plus of the closing statements of the prosecution yesterday for the Chauvin trial, right? Mm -hmm. I, I would guess if we all watched it together, there was at least 50 lies. 
And I didn't know that when in your closing arguments, you can just say whatever the fuck you want and no one's going to stop you. Because if you did it in, in the middle of a trial, you know, objection, your honor, whatever, whatever, overruled, whatever the fuck, right? Yeah. This dude was going in on all the emotional attacks on the juror's heart that he could possibly go after. After, you know, we're going on, what, week two or three of this, where the, what he was saying basically had already been disproved. But closing statements, let's try to leave the last, you know, uh, heart stringing, you know, f- un- unfactual statements on the table to see what the pro- to see what the jury thinks. And dude, it was so bizarre. Just lie after lie after lie for the last hour. Not to mention that the jurors were never sequestered. This is arguably one of the uh, boiling points in in America. You know, this George Floyd situation, and um, the jury was never sequestered. Normally, in a high profile case like this. They keep them in a hotel room. Right. They can't be watching uh, fucking punk ass CNN, getting putting ideas in their head. So that's number one. They never sequestered. Number two, you got Maxine Waters uh, uh, throwing gasoline on the fucking flame. And um, number three, the way these jurors are being threatened, it's almost like mafia style intimidation like bitch we know where the fuck you live yeah and 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 they already started doxing some of these people they're like juror juror, number uh like two of the jurors i guess they were um man sorry i don't want to have to go to my twitter but that's all right two of the jurors were wanting to something they took some kind of stance or they there's something or other and these people posted this thing like, let it be known that juror number this and juror number that, here are their biographies. And basically doxing people. So how do you want justice to prevail? How do you want people to... Do process to yeah, take place. do fucking process. How do, you, how do you ensure jurors looking at the facts, looking at the information, looking at uh, toxicology, looking at, oh, we saw this camera angle too. Because video lies, right? A lot of people like to rely on the argument of, I saw the tape. It was nine minutes, okay? Well, now they're saying the carbon monoxide, might, you know, that might be mass slaughter because they had them right over there by the tailpipe. Mm. Um, it's a lot of shit. But the brown liberal, too busy with the white liberal pee-pee down their throat, <laughs> that they will bend over backwards into a fucking pretzel on some mental gymnastics to... To be for gun control and to 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 make Latino lives matter for a little homicide and um, just be blind to the facts. So Play now, this Bill Maher clip. Uh, here we go. Uh, Bill Maher. Here, the name of the clip is New Rule. Give it to me straight, Doc. It's real time with Bill Maher. And finally, New Rule. Don't spin me when it comes to my health. Over the past year, the COVID pandemic has prompted the medical establishment, the media, and the government to take a scared straight approach to getting the public to comply with their recommendations. Well, I'm from a different school. Give it to me straight, Doc. Because in the long run, that always works better than you can't handle the truth. Um, I want to, dude, it's so good. He basically says stuff like, people, that, uh, Democrats that watch CNN were believing like when they would do a poll they would believe that they had a 50 percent chance or something stupid of ending in a hospital it's like bro you know it's like one percent less like but yeah. like they they're so fucking off let me see what else he's talking you have to answer for how did your audience wind up believing such a bunch of crap about covid perfect point to pick up at mm-hmm. A new report in The Atlantic says the media won't stop putting pictures of the beach on stories about COVID, even though it's looking increasingly like the beach is the best place to avoid it. Sunlight is the best disinfected and vitamin D is the key to a robust immune system. Texas lifted its COVID restrictions recently and their infection rates went down in part because of people getting outside to let the sun and wind do their thing. <laughs> but- Man, I want to I want to post this to the what did he said Instagram because I just want to ring the alarm. I just want people to have a little bit more perspective and People try to dismiss me as a conspiracy theorist and shit like that. Meanwhile, in that post, too, where we, we you know, mentioned it yesterday on the What They Said page, something he posted, the f- one of the first ones was, 
I think you had, the, the caption was like, uh, you know, who would have thought that not having masks and allowing oxygen, you know, yeah, would yeah. help? So, so oxygen helps. So oxygen helps. The comment was like, so there wasn't oxygen before with the mask on was a comment. It's like you, you, it, a plane couldn't have gone higher over this person's head. Well, I purposely did. I put a question mark at the end let me, because that was a trap. I wanted to bait these people. No, totally. But it, it's supposed to bait you into like an actual, okay. Please disprove how oxygen doesn't help. Not to say, well, because wearing masks, they don't have oxygen. Well, already, no, they have less. We know that. This, is, this was the trap I set. <clears throat> I might want to go in there and edit it and put a question mark so that it's more like I'm asking, a, so oxygen helps? Because <laughs> I put, looks like oxygen helps, mm, exclamation right. point. <clears throat> the trap I set was, was to get these brown liberals, number one, take the white liberal pee out their mouth. That was the first trap. So the first trap I wanted to set was, for them to take my statement and for them to jump in and argue, uh-uh, Chingo, it's because herd immunity and look at how many people are, are, are getting vaccinated. And, and um, you know, just I wanted them to give me a list of reasons of other variables as to why our numbers went down. They were, I knew they were going to say stuff like, because um, they, they, they stopped testing as less much. Testing, it's yeah. less testing. And, and because by you giving me this list of reasons, you're basically telling me, that it don't make no sense that California's still locked down. That's really what I wanted you to process. It's kind of like, hit me with a bunch of reasons. That's it. it ain't oxygen. It's because of this, 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 herd immunity and vaccines and this and less testing. Okay, so you're telling me that we are doing well. We're, it doesn't matter what reasons it is. You're saying it's because of these uh, a laundry list of reasons. I just threw out one, one variable, oxygen, right? <laughs> but now, so, so now that we're on the same page that we are doing well, whether it's less testing or whatever, herd immunity or whatever you think, vaccinations, then why the fuck are so many other states and countries on such a strict lockdown? Why are they so hell-bent on rushing in to shut down Good Friday? Why are they telling us we might be able to barbecue on 4th of July? You know, I think there's something to say about how fun it could be to be uh, like a walk, not a walking contradiction, but just somebody who loves to go and, and play devil's advocate, which I'll admit is also fun to do, um, or just be a contrarian. And this might be the best time to like to make this a clip and thank all the people who are listening to all the podcasts, watching all the clips, reading all the posts and captions, and then commenting as a contrarian in the post. Because, hey, interactions help the What Did You Said page. Interactions help the Chingo Bling page, and it helps the podcast grow. So with their enthusiasm to go in ham on why it's wrong, why we're dumb, why whatever, I just, I actually, I'm going to applaud you for thank, and thank you for helping this grow because your exuberance of having to prove us and disprove us, rather, of how wrong we are is, is really appreciated. We're taking up a lot of real estate in your brains, and we appreciate the listens, the downloads, the likes. Uh, even if there was a thumbs down on Instagram, I'm sure you'd give it to us, and uh, you're a part of helping us grow as well. I wonder how many... Um how many brown liberals or, you know, Democrats or uh, anti-Trumpers, people that call us sellouts, coconuts, Trump pansies. I wonder how many of them, out of curiosity, have tuned in to this crazy show and say, man, what is this red pill tamales shit Chingo talking about? Let me hear what kind of weird tinfoil hat shit they talking about. Dude, I don't think a lot. I would, I would, I mean, I would hope a lot, but honestly, no, because they're so, it's like they. It's because they don't trust me. They, tr they rather trust the white man. Th that, and also, <laughs> they don't want to, it's like, I'll, I'll comment on your post, and I might even like watch most of it, or the IGTV, or the reel, but I'm not going to give them the download on this podcast. I'm not going to go listen to the whole thing, which, hey, you're missing out. It's great content. I just think it's, they have that much of a, it's almost in a way the way people had a big, uh, eh, had a big thing against Trump, they have a, against listening to a full podcast of ours. Mm. Like, they, they can't fathom that you might make some points that might make them go huh yeah they they they, they refuse to believe that uh rob and myself might make some sense because i would argue that rob and myself and red pill tamales and and all the patrons and every all the tia every member of the tia the tamal intelligence agency we are the worst nightmare to the to the leftists the leftists are afraid of us why because we got a little bit of street cred no. We're brown, so it's hard to call us a white supremacist. You look goofy as a motherfucker calling me a white supremacist. Um, my homeboy Jesse, Jesse Olguin, who was locked up, he's like, hey, man, I was locked up with real white supremacists. He's like, they had swastika tattoos. He's like, these are for real. They really think they su supreme over others. And he's like, and they weren't shit in prison. He's like, they were on our nuts. They, they were scared of us. He's like, how the fuck do I get called? He's like, I'm an ex-gangbanger from the hood. How the fuck you calling me a white supremacist? So it don't make no sense. 
we are the biggest threat to the leftist man the leftist agenda whether it's foreign entities trying to come in and destabilize the u.s they're trying to make us a third world country that's why they want to defund the police that's why they want us to have open borders and no sovereignty they trying to just destabilize everything so we're not gonna stop and uh the thea is spreading the word Somebody wrote in one of the comments here, just remember this, it was like Chingo Bling the American, but they spelt it with K's and put three of them, the American, you know, I was like, wow, what a dummy, (laughs) what a dumb comment to leave. Well, they could suck my dick, Ah. how about that? Um, Let me jump around on some of this, we talked about the uh, Bill Maher, what else is on this list right here? Well, we can uh, can get into... uh a little, little homicide. Okay, little homicide. Dave Diablo. Uh, I know we posted that picture, or rather that video, the full video, that I hadn't even seen until it was on the What Do You Said page, um, where it shows, you know, the from the beginning to end with a cop, you know. Well, oh, actually, it shows from the very beginning where he's just walking down the sidewalk with his buddy, and he's pa 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 shooting the gun off, right? Just shooting shit. Just shooting shit. Don't know who he shot, what he shot at, um, but shoots it eight times. Like, you know, like up in the air or how? No, I think he shot it at something. Like it, it was, a, I think it was at a car or at a building. Don't remember. It's in the post. It's in the article with a full video. And then the, and the cameras, you know, surveillance footage goes around the corner. Uh, I guess a cop hears it or whatever. Somebody calls it in. Uh, the kids start running down the alley. And one of them just darts one way and the other one darts the other way. And that's the, the little, little baby Diablo who gets chased. And, you know, it's got the timestamps and it's slowing it down as it's happening. And you see when he throws, you know, he says, throw your, you know, hands in the air, he throws the gun, it, but it's around a wall. There's a wall right here and he's dropping the gun, turns around, and as he's, you know, I guess turning around, puts his hands up, you know, you hear the thing, like the timestamp and the the, boot, the blast of the gun, and he shoots him. And it's like, man, it's a, it's if as if situations hadn't gotten trickier with some of these interactions with black, you know, black people and Mexican people with cops. Mm-hmm. This one was so split second mm-hmm. that we've all seen the ones where... The, the recently like the cops just getting gunned down like somebody gets out of their car somebody's in the bed of their truck or on the other side of the fender and then da 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 that's it done so a lot of people were like he acted accordingly like he went around the corner and dropped the gun you know he was running from the cops to begin with it's a fucked up situation but the, the tia weighed in on it and most of them i would say 99 percent of them were like yeah the cop did what he had to do to mm-hmm. make it home that night yeah so i'm gonna give you my take on the adam toledo and i know a lot you know I'm sure his family, his community are hurting. You know, he was only 13. <clears throat> I saw some Latino celebrities posting about it saying he was just a child. He was a baby. He had his whole life ahead of him. So I'm going to give you two takes. First, for my safety, mm-hmm. I'm going to give you the uh, Lefty Larry. Okay. All right. So the Lefty Larry take on Adam Toledo is this is just another example of white supremacy. For too long, police have been used as a tool by the white supremacists to over-police black and brown communities. Little Adam was just a child. And the police, they're white supremacists, and in their head, they wake up in the morning and they just go hunting minorities. They wake up when they get out of... LeBron James told us this. I don't know if you know, Rob. I don't think so. LeBron James said, we don't know what these cops are thinking. Maybe they had an argument with a loved one. Maybe somebody pissed them off. And when they left that day, they might say, hmm, I guess this is going to be the day for one of you beaners. (laughs) So that is the leftist CNN mainstream media narrative. And for my safety... I have taken that stance because I don't want to get further canceled. I don't want to get, uh, you know, I don't want to get banned from Chicago or any of these, you know, cities because they might think that if I take another stance of like evidence right. and proof, and they were shooting a gun, and you know, I'm not going, I'm not going to criticize little little Diablo, baby Diablo, little homicide. He had a placaso. His placaso was little homicide. All right, so that's the Lefty Larry take. Uh, That is the Latino Hollywood take. That is, uh, he was just a child. He was a baby. He had his whole life ahead of him. And, you know, okay, boom. Now, the Red Pill Tamales take is, Democrats killed Little Homicide. Let me tell you how Democrats killed Little Homicide. So, Democrats run Chicago. Uh, Let's not forget, Democrat President Obama came up through chicago right he was you know he didn't he didn't fix their murder problem the eight years he was in office but democrats killed little homicide number one the educational system the teachers unions 
you know there's no competition in schools so the school to prison pipeline is held in place thanks to democrats so chicago is democrat run it's like usually way up there in murders sometimes it's the murder capital i don't know i don't keep up with which city's murder capital but um if if chicago maybe wasn't run by democrats maybe little homicide would still be alive he probably would have had a better education um maybe some better policing more funding for the police even though mayor lightfoot just funded their police even though she told everybody she was going to defund so if, if it wasn't for the democrats allowing for chicago to have so much gun violence and so much murder and a bad educational system little homicide might still be here so that is a damn shame and um i bet they're trying to turn that into a latino lives matter they're going to try to turn little homicide's death into see that's why we need to vote for democrats they're really inching their way there. Like you would think that they're trying to, because BLM's under so much scrutiny right now, from you know Brianna Taylor's family to other people within the organization or chapters or whatever, they're like, all right, we need to pivot real quick. To, you know, build another audience or build another uh, organization or or whatever. Like I posted uh, the Eddie Griffin one. Mm. That was me, the Eddie Griffin take on uh, Adam Toledo and Kyle Rittenhouse. What did he say? So Let here, me see. hold that one. Okay. This is Eddie Griffin's take. He said, Adam Toledo was 13 years old, hands up, stopped and complied. <sighs> Killed no one. Latino and shot by a cop. Cal, oh, fuck. And then he says, Kyle Rittenhouse was 17 years old, hands on an AR-15, was never asked to comply. Killed two people. He was white and praised by cops. First of all, false, 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 lie, false, hoax, false, false, lie, uh, lack of context, false narrative, and false. That's really what the meme should have said. Yeah, and if you swipe up the the TIA, uh, yeah, the TIA understood that, and a lot of the responses were very similar. I mean, you can't you can't refute a lot of the things that we know about these situations because they're there. You can find them. Uh, Eddie, Eddie Griffin, man, he's he's a great comedian. Legend. But, um, I just wish he wouldn't push this false narrative of adam toledo being an innocent little boy who wasn't doing shit who complied how how did he comply if if he tossed the gun and then turned how's yeah. that complying in that little split second it i mean, I mean so, somebody gotta say it right I'll, I'll be the coconut to sell it to say it don't be out there acting a fucking fool don't be out you know what i'm saying if you if you resist an arrest if you're not complying and, and i'm talking about in general this is just good life advice uh, you know this just big homie shit this some big homie shit i'm not trying to set y'all up like a crash dummy the big homie advice is if you want to make it home alive don't be jumping back in your car when you're in the middle of a yeah. fucking uh arrest or traffic stop don't be reaching for shit you know um you could get tased you might they might try to tase you accidentally shoot you there's a lot of shit that could go wrong um but don't nobody want to say that. Don't nobody want to keep it real. Especially not these brown liberals. These brown liberals are leading our people off the off a, a cliff, off the edge of a cliff. Um, yeah. So Eddie Griffin, uh, you got a lot of work to do, man. You got to peep game, and uh, don't fall for the okie doke. Not everything is about race, and the mainstream media, the minute they find out, like somebody might get sh a shot by a cop and they're white they just shut the fuck up they won't they you know they won't bring it up you know you never hear about those uh here's a shout out uh alum of the podcast and former anthony he uh, tweeted i almost i'm almost certain that blm is using twitter to call and incite violence and have been for years yet no punishment or condemnation for representatives and this was tweeted by black lives matter uh la 49 minutes ago as the jury deliberates the chauvin trial Black Lives Matter is being asked whether or not there will be uprisings. Our answer, absolutely. Stay ready and stay tuned for more. <laughs> okay. Well, look, I live in a Democrat-run city, so I'm just trying to see where they're going to riot at. So I you know go the saying? other way. Just don't riot. Oh, la madre, boy, you got to fuck you, bro. Whoa. <laughs> God damn. Jesus. <laughs> we got to call an exterminator back here, man. This used to be a garage, and... Uh, the humidity is making these bugs <laughs> want to jump on Rob. Good looking out. Rob is very popular this morning. Yeah, no shit.
Um, so but yeah, man, like imagine anybody on the right saying something remotely close to this. And then you got Maxine Waters out there running her mouth. And it's just, it, it, you can't, you can no longer ignore the bias. Like before, let's say when Trump first took office, you're like, all right, let's see where this roller coaster goes, right? And then you start to slowly catch these things, you know, like, oh, it's a little odd, it's a little weird, it's a little, a little false, you know, a couple of sprinkles of uh, salt bay untruths there. Now it's so clear that if you just deny it, you're just, you're just blind to it. You're just ignorance and bliss kind of thing. Here's the cool thing about getting red pilled. Once you get red pilled and you start seeing stuff and you start seeing the spin and the propaganda, you can never unsee it. Yeah. Once you start seeing hypocrisy, once you start seeing how the left is just the cause of and the root of all division in this country, like they they literally hate America, man. They hate America. They trying to destabilize us. They want us to be a third world country. Now let me let me um pivot into this. They want us to be Canada. Send an SOS fucking signal somewhere. They want us to be Mexico. They want us to be Venezuela. They want us to be Colombia. Now, now check this out, bro. On Netflix, they got a series called Rotten. Have you seen that? No. So there's a series on, on Netflix called Rotten. Yeah, text me these things. Well, we just saw the avocado episode, and we started watching the wine episode like two days ago. So check this out. It's called Rotten, and what they do is every episode, they focus in on like a commodity or some economic thing. So one of the episodes was about los aguacates from Michoacan. Okay. Avocados from Mexico. So it goes into... When you start making jingles. Man, brother. It goes into the backstory of the boom in, in avocados. Like, for example, avocados were born in Mexico. It's like ideal, like in Michoacan, the, the temperature, because avocados are very picky about all the, uh, you know... Climate? Everything, yeah, yeah, climate, thank you. The climate, all the climate stuff, very, very picky. So they, Mexico had a competitive advantage, Right. So once the boom happened where white girls want, for, uh, what is it called? Avocado toast for $18 and shit. Uh, once the commercials start running that, hey, Super Bowl, it's your favorite meal. You got to get that guac. Um, avocados start booming. So here's, here are the repercussions, bro. The repercussions are these farmers in Mexico started making that money. And when you live in a destabilized country mm -hmm. with so much corruption... <clears throat> What happens? People start getting kidnapped. People start getting held for ransom. Um, you start getting corruption. It, it almost becomes like the dope game. So now, parts of Michoacan, the f avocado farmers are tired of getting kidnapped and held for ransom and getting ears chopped off, fingers chopped off. They're having to hire, like almost like private police. Um, some towns in Michoacan are like utopia. Because they have so much safety and so much police because the avocado money is funding all of it for their fucking safety. Mm. So it creates a dystopia and a utopia. So you have extreme violence. Um, and that's what happens when your country's destabilized, when your police is up for the take, that when everybody's corrupt, when the economics of the situation create this desperation mm -hmm. and you ain't got no choice to be like, look, man. If I'm not an avocado farmer, I'm going to be a fucking sicario or I'm going to be kidnapping people. And, you know, this is where the money is. So it's really interesting, the ramifications and, and all this economic stuff. You know, when you deal with, oh, and NAFTA happened with Clinton around that time when the shit was booming. So Marisol was like, yo, does that mean that somebody paid somebody? Like there was, some, you know what I mean? Like convenient it's just very interesting. And then there was another episode that talked about wine in France and how this little group that was kind of like an Antifa sprung out during this this wine money thing where they were like protesting. And, and it's just very interesting, man. You just mm. got to watch it. Uh, it's called Rotten. It's on Netflix. And I never knew, man. Next time you eat an avocado. And then check this out. So in Chile... They started getting the avocado hustle too, but it created this water fight, this fight over water. So there were people who couldn't have access to water, didn't have no drinking water because they needed it all 
for the avocado crops and the farmers because they it was like the politicians a natural resource and the money mm. and there was a huge demand so it's almost like americans are eating so much fucking avocado that there was even a gentleman that's almost calling for a boycott to like hey stop buying avocados because people are thirsty People can't get water over here because y'all keep buying avocados and it creates this economic thing to where the fucking corrupt politicians are hogging up all the water for the farmers and now these kids are thirsty. Ain't that some shit? Damn. All from an avocado. So very, very interesting, man. I uh, I caught wind of something that I haven't watched yet, but now that you're mentioning I have it rotten on Netflix, I wrote it in my notes, uh, The Swamp on HBO. Have you heard what? of that? Uh-uh. So this apparently came out last summer. So it's called uh, The Swamp. It's, uh, it's an HBO you know, I think it's a docu mini docu series or documentary, and the swamp provides a look behind the scene, uh, look behind the curtain of Washington politics by following three renegade Repu- renegade Republican congressmen over the course of a pivotal year of politics to champion pres- the president's call for draining the swamp. Mm-hmm. You want to check out this trailer? Yeah. And the reason uh, I bring it up is because one of the main characters is Matt Gates, and we haven't talked about any of Matt Gates's you know news uh, info going on right now as far as you know the mm-hmm. fucking sexual allegations. Yeah, they're framing him right now because there's no nobody could tell me the name of the accuser. Big time. There's no evidence. So until you have some evidence or a source, Mr. President. Great job, I'm proud of you. I think we won the day, sir. I didn't run as someone to unify Washington. I ran to change Washington. I had really started to think about the Donald Trump presidency. He could bring the fight to a town that badly needed it. You know, when I first heard that term, I hated it. I said, oh, that's so hokey. If people are going to drain the swamp like the president wants to do, they need better information about how this place is broken. And that's my mission in Congress. The hierarchy of power in Washington, D.C. is special interest groups, leadership, rank and file members. It's who can raise the money and the special interest groups control the money. The lobbyists, that's the swamp. Members of Congress are expected to pay for their committee assignments. 200,000, 500,000. It becomes a perpetual campaign. It's basically how to whore yourself out for money. You care about health care, the env- mm. environment. You got to care where the money's coming from. Madison didn't count on partisanship. Politics of hate is the most productive technique for fundraising we have. You make yourself a target when you live like I live. Asshole. Do something. Everybody's so obsessed deciding what we should do. Get over yourself. As if we can do something. I'm coming after you, Gate. The only quid pro quo is Trump's commitment to drain the swamp. What has President Trump done to drain the swamp? Wow. So it's interesting because, you know, I didn't really know a lot about Matt Gaetz's history, and I just recently kind of caught wind of some of the stuff. But he he basically, when he, caught his, when he got his seat in Congress, uh, ran unopposed the second time, and put 200 grand of his own money into that campaign. And the first one, I think he put in 100 grand of, of his own money into the campaign, winning a, a, a vacant seat, I think, that went on a, ran unopposed. Um, and then also became one of the only members of Congress, I think, that uh, was not accepting PAC money. And once that was understood or, or whatever, decided by him, then these smear campaigns started mm. coming out. So I, I don't know. It seems interesting. I'm sure you know it's made by HBO. I don't, you, we all know how they probably tend to lead. Who knows what kind of a picture they're going to paint of Matt Gates and the rest of the congressmen that they they follow? But I mean, it was from last summer, leading up to the election. So I can only imagine. Well, Charlie Chester said on tape during his Tinder date uh, when he was um, they did the spy cam on him with um, Project Veritas. Charlie Chester himself said, like uh, Matt Gates, you know, he's a big threat to the Democrats. So. You know, we're going to keep running any story that makes him look bad, you know, regardless if there's a source or not. Of course. Regardless if, like, most of the accusations are of, are of someone he knows. Yeah. Like a friend of his or something. That's really who most of the bad shit was about. But anyway. Um, and in that same, you know, since we just saw the trailer and I saw it for the first time, we saw Nancy Pelosi as they're talking about money. Interestingly enough about her, her net worth has risen from, I think it was like, I don't know, five or ten million um like as of last year, two years ago, to now we're like 2021, post-pandemic almost, over 100 mil. Damn. 
And as, as I was learning about, like, a lot of it came from playing the stock market, playing, you know, putting mm. a lot of these chips into the stock market and having a lot of insider information. Mm. So I think we're going to be hearing a lot more of that. Um, like when she knew that uh, Biden was going to do a push for more electric vehicles. Dude, all kinds of stuff. Tesla, Apple, a lot of this. And her husband, uh, I forgot what his position is, but a lot of the investments and a lot of the things that happen are under his name. I forgot his name. But he's also on the board of something or on the head of something. And there's just, there's so much fuckery going and i'm sure it happens on the right absolutely happens on the right but the problem with this is that nancy pelosi is the most powerful person in almost congress but in the house for sure and she has the power to just say yes to that or no to that and that's what it is you know her dad was in the mob no i didn't know that yeah like they she was groomed for politics like uh I think, like, uh, man, my details are hazy, but I'm sure the TIA is probably, like, screaming into their radio. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but basically, like, her brother had some sketchy shit going on, and he got off, and, and the dad, I think, offed a couple people. He was whacking people. and uh, But anyway, they put little Nancy into politics, and uh, so she just comes from that, yeah. from that mob shit. Um, it's bizarre, man. Pelosi. It, it, for sure. And isn't Gavin Newsom her nephew? That he's, uh, he's married... I think he's married to her daughter or to her niece or something, something like, like that. that. The, dude, it's it's so crazy. Like, TV is interesting and shows are great. I, I wish I would have watched House of Cards when it came out, but I never saw it. I heard it was great. But the real life politics shit is a show that you just can't write. There's so much fuckery that goes on in there. Yeah, like the real the real shit. The, the shit real that we, shit. The shit that we talk about. Yeah, Eddie Bravo is famously, you know, uh, quoted saying like, man, fuck television, you know, like watch what's going on in the real world. Like that's the best TV show you could ever watch. I'm like, yeah, I agree. And it's true, and that's why, that's why this podcast is growing so much. That's why I feel like a lot of Rasa are waking up, because like I said earlier, once you see the hypocrisy, once you start noticing, like, damn, they lied about this, they lied about that, they want us to believe this, they want us to believe, look, baby Diablo was uh, walking with his book bag and was about to go do some Bible study, and he had no gun. And he's just a little boy, even though they say he's like six. He was six foot and like weighs X amount. He was a oh, big, damn. big kid. Big ass 13 so how you going to know he's 13? Right. Got a gun and shit and hides it, flings it in the in the split. In did the split did second. you watch the, the whole video? Uh-uh. Do you want to watch it? Sure. Okay. I'll pull it up real quick. And then we'll say All I've seen is like stills of like, here's what the media won't show you, where they circle the gun and how he tossed it. And Yeah. Let me see if I can find it real so, quick. Here's just a friendly reminder. If you're walking through an alley with some guns and you're just popping off a gun in an alley in Chicago and you might get into some shit, you know, it might have been another gangster could have took you out. You, he probably could have accidentally shot somebody, and the story would have been totally different. Right. But the brown liberal, they, they want to just, whatever the fuck CNN says, that's what they're going with. Let's see. Make sure the audio's on. This is on, uh, what did he say his Instagram page? So you can see him walking. We got to edit that caption, Rob, because I didn't know this had to do with a uh, little homicide. That's them walking. Are you supposed to, are they, what are we, what are we seeing? So, That's just them shooting. Just randomly shooting, rat, walking yeah, around. Yeah. And then and they're, they're running. running. Okay. Channel 2 Sam. Channel 2 Sam. 356 South Sawyer, 8 rounds, corner on the street. Okay, here comes the body cam, police body cam. Cop pulls up, sees him, starts running after him. The other guy, I, I, he just lets him go. Like, I don't know for what reason, he just runs by him. Please stop! Stop! Please stop! Hey, show me your f***ing head! Okay, there go the gun. Stop it! Stop it! Oof. That was a split second. Split so second. there's the other camera from behind the wall. A lot of camera angles. So yeah. Yeah, you're you're being watched everywhere. When this shit when this shit goes to court, they're gonna play all this shit in court. Mm-hmm. Video lies, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let these people okie doke you. You know, the left, they're gonna they're gonna propagate uh is that the word? Yeah. They're gonna propagate a narrative. 
and they're gonna they're gonna put pull your heartstrings and remind you how little Adam was just 13 and how y'all need to be upset. Y'all need to come riot with us and let Antifa mix in so we could destabilize America and turn it into Mexico <laughs> and defund your police like Ben and Jerry's ice cream said. Ben and Jerry's punk ass ice cream wants to take the police out of brown communities. Mind your fucking business, uh, Ben and Jerry. Luckily, Blue, Blue Bell stays out of politics, but if they didn't, because they, they they don't post anything, it's just like ice cream for us, and that's it. Great, I appreciate that. Uh, but man, if they were pro anything, I'd be like, can we take a tour, maybe do a podcast as we walk around Blue Bell, see how the shit's made? But mm -hmm. anyhow, I digress. I mean, yeah, I'm down to promote Blue Bell as an alternative to punk-ass, corporate, Unilever-owned Ben & Jerry's, who made a statement saying, basically saying, uh, we need to take police out of brown communities. Do you know who that would affect, you stupid motherfuckers? Basically, you're setting up, a, you would create a power vacuum to where you, you're setting up a situation for now cartels, MS-13, or even just neighborhood thugs that want to go ahead and start exploiting people, extorting people, and turn this shit into Mexico. You know, it's an oversimplified way of putting it, but when they do that, or when any organization does that to a community, uh, you know, defund the police, you know, let's get everybody riled up and throw gasoline on the fire... When it eventually passes, right, by, because people, it fades out or uh, law enforcement finally start doing something about it, they then go and start investing in these communities and buying all these burned down properties and, and land uh, for pennies on the dollar. And then they, you in, you in essence, enriched them by rioting and burning your fucking community down. Yeah, don't fall for it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know where this uh, little homicide uh, narrative, if it's, if Rasa is really going to get behind it, because so far... Like, I'll just, I'll just let y'all know, man. It's a certain comedian of Mexican-American descent that posted that saying, like, oh, he was just a child, pobrecito, leave him alone. Mm -hmm. and, and not saying, not staying out of it, not, not considering all the angles and all the facts. Just really just jumping in, like, you know, to protect the white liberal. Yeah. Like, the white liberal already wants me to do this. And sure enough, a lot of the comments, they were mixed. A lot of people were like, uh, wasn't his name Little Homicide? And he was shooting a gun and he had the gun and he tossed the gun 0.8 seconds as he's like about to throw his hands up. Yeah. And uh, most people, I'm sure, were on there like, you're right. Oh, my God. The white liberal. Oh, my God. We need to write. Latino lives matter. Pobrecito. Little Diablo. Baby Diablo. Oh, my God. Come on, y'all. Y'all look real goofy. Y'all look real fucking goofy. Like, Raza first. Like, somebody told me in a comment, why aren't you talking about Adam Toledo? I thought it was Raza first. And I'm like, tune into the podcast. Listen to my podcast. I'm definitely going to talk about it. It's just not, might not be what you like to hear. It's like, somebody's got to be the adult, man. Somebody's got to be the grown up and say, let's keep it real. All the parents out there. I have a 12 year old, you know, and some of y'all that have a 13 year old. What if your son or daughter, whatever, is out there acting a fool like that, popping off a gun to where people are going to call it in, the cops are going to show up, they're going to look for you, and now what you going to do? You run, toss it behind a thing, and you end up shot. Yeah. Now you got comedians, Eddie Griffin and others, Eddie Grifton <laughs> um, and others, but I don't. they want to compare it to Kyle Rittenhouse and... What the fuck do y'all want? Like, what, what are you comedians trying to do? One minute you retweeting Sasha Bowen. Can't, what's that dude's name? Baron Cohen. Fucking that dude, Borat. <laughs> retweeting him, talking about censorship and, and that type of stupid ass shit. And now you're promoting the white liberals fucking narrative. You don't even know you're a tool. You're a pawn in this leftist agenda. Like, open your eyes. Keep it real. Keep it 100. Be a real OG. Be an adult. And speak about the facts. Don't just, uh, you know, I could, I get it, man. If you were a 21 year old comedian and you jumped the gun, you're like, Lil Diablo wouldn't hurt nobody when he was shooting the gun. L leave Lil Diablo alone. Okay, if you're 21, I'll give you a pass. But if you're 60, <laughs> if you're 60 years old and you pushing the white man's fucking narrative, the white liberal, sorry, not the white man. <laughs> You pushing the white liberals narrative, the CNN, the MSNBC, the Marxist, the, the propaganda, you are a pawn, you are a tool, and, and you, you, you're not even keeping it real. You're not a big homie. You're not being a real OG saying, look, y'all, if you're 13, don't be out there bucking a gun in the shy, and then they're going to call the police on you, and you might get shot. 
Instead, you want to be like, ay, pobrecito. Damn, man. What a shame, right? Pobrecito. <clears throat> Shout out to your fans, though, that recognize like what you're doing and what we're doing here with the podcast that will re- respond to those brainwashed uh, fans and say, when they'll say, what happened to the old Chingo Bling? Where's he at? Why are you going so hard on all this well, politics Well, go follow shit? somebody else. That and also the, the, the fans that understand are like, he's gotten older. He's, he's learning in, you know, different things. He's talking about things that matter when he's got a family and other things. He saw the other camera angle. <laughs> that too. He knows that they want, this is what they want. Let me tell y'all what the left wants. These leftists, they want the raza. They, they want to. They want to pull at your heartstrings. They want to get you riled up. They want you to start Latino Lives Matter. That way they can have two groups that are always going to vote Democrat no matter what. They always going to believe the news no matter what. And they're going to tear up their own neighborhood. I damn near want to see it just to be like, <laughs> I told you so. Can you picture Can you picture all these little uh, Chicano studies, Mecha, uh, you know, Orale, uh, Pobrecito, Adam Toledo, and they just cart start tearing shit up, start burning shit and, and crying and shit. Oh, Latino lives matter. We all got to vote Democrat and, and, and fucking up the barrio. I almost want to see it just to be like, look at these stupid motherfuckers. It, yeah, what's the, so what's the end goal here? Honestly, I was thinking this on the way, on the way here. What's the end goal for these, let's say they're, hope not, but that organization pops up as well, right? Latino lives matter for whatever reason. You along can miss with, me. You can miss me with that. Along with BLM, what is it that you're seeking to do, right? Because... Buy mansions. Yeah, I mean, a few of them will, just like uh, Homegirl did. But when you're talking about inequalities and what's going on, you know, like uh, this rhetoric of uh, certain places are turning into Jim, Jim Crow again, show me where it's turning into Jim Crow again. Oh, because racist ass Georgia wants to, wants you to show ID to vote? You know, and but <laughs> we're, we're a country that's had a black president elected twice. Mm-hmm. We have tons of powerful elected officials in Congress and senators mm-hmm. around the country. We got a black VP. We got some of the richest people in the, wor- in, in, in the world, but also well, in America are in black. In America, yeah. In America, most, you know, this got the most rich black folk. Yeah. I'd, I'd argue. And then Latinos are no different. Like, we have plenty of powerful congresswomen and, and senators. And, you know, what can most, mostly you Mostly on the left. Mostly on the left. Regardless, they're there, right? Yeah, you, yeah you're right. If you're, if you're on that side and you're fighting for whatever the fuck you're fighting for, on your side, there is a Mount Rushmore of those officials and people and power and, and money that you could achieve. What do you want? So, this is one of the things I saw Turning Point USA had on their, like, their T-shirts and stickers and posters basically saying <clears throat> basically saying like america is the shit right like love america always because if you deny that you shouldn't be allowed to be here well well, well like when you were saying why why are they pushing a the narrative if we have black billionaires in america we have uh, so many um brown and black people in politics and and um, like America is a land of opportunity and why does everybody want to come here and why don't nobody leave as much as they fucking uh, uh, cry and complain like you don't see rafts leaving Miami to get to Cuba yeah you see what I'm saying you don't see people trying to fight to go into Canada even though they said as soon as Trump's elected we're going to Canada no. I wish you would have because then you wouldn't have been able to come back keep an eye on Canada man Canada is the canary in the coal mine so when Turning Point makes those um, cool posters and shirts saying like capitalism's the shit, like America always, like it's to counter that face, um, that fake false narrative that America is oppressive, it's so racist, and it, they're mean here, and it's KKK, and everything's white supremacy, and it's like, mm, well. I mean, maybe the teachers' unions are white supremacists because they don't want people in these uh, uh, brown and black communities to be able to they don't want black parents and brown parents to be able to take their kid out of that school and have some school competition they don't want school choice so if you want to talk about racism there's your fucking racism but this fake false narrative that america is inherently evil we need to tear it down destroy it reinvent it and, and bigger government and socialism and just wait on your ubi check and destabilize it and defund your police and so we could be like mexico or a third world country or just no no pride no nationalistic pride i mean when they make us uh, pledge allegiance when we're little that's brainwashing but that's good brainwashing <laughs> oh they're gonna take this out of context so bad i hope they do 
that's good brainwashing. Like some brainwashing you need. Like for example, hey man, this is what we stand for right here. These 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 stars and stripes. This flag right here, Americans. We need to we need to have sovereignty. We need to protect ourselves. We need to be on the same team. We need to be unified. We can't let no outside entity take us over. We can't let no internal entity take us over. We don't like being lied to. We want justice. We love freedom of speech. We love the Constitution, Second Amendment. But no, they've, they've, they've destabilized us with the fake news, the media. You got the punk-ass swamp. You got punk-ass CNN. And then you got punk-ass Latino leaders that are going along with it. Mira, pobrecito Adam Toledo, a little homicide. Nobody, he wasn't doing nothing. He just shot a gun a little bit. And he's 13. He's in an alleyway and he's running away from a cop. At two in the morning. And then he tossed it behind a thing mm-hmm. right before. And CNN, I bet CNN got so turned on when they, when they were like, can you find me an angle where it looks like he's just an innocent little boy with his hands up? Actually, yes, sir. There's a, a split second that if you pause it, right after he tosses the gun okay do you see the gun when he okay no there's an angle where it the gun's already tossed and he's got his hands up and then they shoot him okay good let's let's run with it you think it'll work but someone's going to show the other angle sir yeah man but these are brown people bro they've they've been traumatized they're they're, we already brainwashed them plus we have latino leaders in, in our pocket like we're in their pockets we have latino leaders that are gonna help us push this narrative you think so? Yeah, they will, man. They're going to they're gonna put it on their social media. They have millions of, millions of followers, and they're going to keep it going. All right, man, but you know the other angle is going to come out, right? You know there's body cam footage and uh, uh, cameras from the neighborhood, people's ring, doorbell, Amazon. There's all kind of camera. We can keep it going. Let's just keep it going. You think they'll start a Latino Lives Matter? I don't know. They might. I hope so. They're like, but they got red pill tamales now, and they're countering the fake that, that's the thing about red pill tamales, bro. We're anti-fake. We're anti-false. If if little Diablo, little homicide. Baby Diablo. That's his black asshole. Get it right. If he really didn't have a gun and he really wasn't doing nothing wrong and he really got shot by a white supremacist cop with swastikas and Nazis and he got a copy of Hitler's Mein Kampf on his bookshelf and he, he tweeted that day, it's, it's going to be the end for one of you beaners today. Because I'm having a bad day. If that were the case, then I'd be right with you, Eddie Griffin and other Latino uh, influencers. I'd be right alongside with you marching, saying, Little Diablo didn't deserve to die. Even though they called him Little Homicide, he was innocent. But that wasn't the case. Because I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. I'm not going to be over there with the white liberal pushing a lie to y'all and setting y'all up for failure. Because that's not what we're about. But so that, call me a seller. That was a great, that was like, I feel like that was a, the monologue for a fucking movie or something where you're re- almost kind of similar to the end of that, uh, what's the it called? Cause of death. Cause of death. Well, you are not dead. In this case, unfortunately, the young man is dead. Yeah. Bad decisions. I mean, what really pisses me off about it too, man, is like I've been saying, like, I wonder if Eva Longoria and America Ferreira and all these leftists, uh, I wonder if they were like, we need to have a candlelight vigil for little homicide. Little Homicide was innocent. He didn't do anything. He tossed the gun before he threw his hands up and got shot. He was an innocent little boy. He had his whole life ahead of him. Little little Black Asso. You know, ba- I think... Baby Lat- Diablo. Lat- <laughs> baby Diablo. And the way they spelt it was like B-V-B-Y. That's how they spelled baby. Upside down, A. Baby Diablo. Yeah. The lockdown doesn't help anybody, right? The lo- having no attention elsewhere led a lot of these people, in my opinion to look for attention elsewhere. And all these events that were going on around the world were a way to do it. This podcast was kind of birthed from that as well, but the difference is, is that we're trying to like, we're trying to sift through all this shit. We're trying to sift through this mask, this, this sea of masks. Have you seen that, that picture of all yeah, the- Yeah, what is that about? I don't know where it's at or who took it or from where, but it's literally a, a fucking landfill of mountains of dirty ass masks. We're trying to sift through all that to try to deliver something that's uh, digestible, that you know has some pros and cons from both sides, that has as much factual information as possible. And even then, motherfuckers would be like, that's not true. That's fake news. All right. Yeah, bro. And then you got, like I said, you got Latino Hollywood um, on the front lines for the white liberal. They're on the front lines trying to brainwash their own people. You literally sitting there telling latinos on your platform 
Pobrecito little homicide, he wasn't doing nothing. He was a baby. Really, bro? Really? You supposed to be the OG? You keeping it real? It's a lot of fake, false, false, uh, faulty motherfuckers out here, Rob. And uh, it's been like that since the beginning of time. Uh, sometimes the real, the real will prevail most of the time. So we're patient. The real? We uh, are patient. You want to go out on DeSantis's uh, uh, little legislation that passed? Oh, yeah, man. Pull that up. So let me pull it up real quick. So Governor DeSantis of Florida, he signs an anti-riot bill into law, sparking an outcry from Democrats and civil rights groups. I cannot believe anybody can argue with what he was saying. He was saying stuff like this. You've seen it, right, Ron? Mm -hmm. he, he was saying stuff like, uh, we saw people trying to shut down highways in other states during their quote-unquote protests. We not finna have you. Hey, man, check this out, fam. Y'all can't be shutting down highways. Right. And then how can you go against that? Hey, man, y'all can't just be burning shit. How do you go against that? Yeah. And then so this is from the Orlando Sentinel. Um, they don't like it. You can read it. You can read the whole thing from the Orlando Sentinel. But they're like this, uh, this you know, basically suppresses the voice of Floridians. You know, they, they took that angle where in quotes, like it, it would basically let people off the hook if they ran through a crowd of protesters that are blocking freeways and roads. Don't block freeways and roads. Don't block freeways and roads. It's, I mean, for people and especially for emergency vehicles, there's been instances where emergency vehicles couldn't get through because some of this blockage. How do you, how do you go against that? How do you say blocking highways is good? Uh, let's see. So the Democratic state senator said, uh, who is black? And Democrat. And Democrat. The new law undermines every Floridian's constitutional right and is disgusting that the GOP would rather... Uh, empower vigilantes and silence voices than listen to the majority of Floridians who oppose a dangerous bill. Dangerous bill. Stupid motherfucker. Uh, let's see the video, man, because do you have that? I don't have it pulled up, but I'll find it real quick. Okay. So Governor DeSantis was saying really common sense stuff, like very logical stuff. My wife and I were sitting there watching it on the cell phone on YouTube, and we're like, how can anybody disagree with this? We're just sitting there like, uh, preach, Governor DeSantis, like drop the mic, because how can any human being with a brain think it's okay to shut down a freeway, bro, or a road or anything? Like, nah, bro, these are freeways. He said, what if you getting off work, you trying to make it home, and these motherfuckers just jump all in the fucking, all in the lane to shut shit down? There was That happened the other day, like two days ago somewhere, where uh, a gentleman was going home after work. And a BLM march, quote unquote, was taking place and they kind of got into like an altercation and like yelling at each other. And then I, it didn't show it on video, but somebody might have pushed somebody and they took away the guy that was driving, trying to get home from work. <laughs> the cop took him and the lady gets back on. They took this, whatever, whatever. And now we're allowed to you know, continue our peaceful march or whatever. Man, you find a clip yet? I'm trying to find one. Um, what else did this man say, man? He was saying, um, basically, he said, we have to protect the citizens of Florida. He's like, for the health health and safety of our citizens, mm -hmm. we're not going to tolerate certain shit. So, yeah, you could peacefully protest. You got the First Amendment right to, to do whatever you want peacefully, but you can't be blocking highways, et cetera. Et cetera. We need to start, we need to start calling him G-Santis. He's a gangster, bro. He is a gangster. And um, I'm sure a lot of people are like, orale, FTP, that pinche governor. Republicans are celebrating a new anti-rioting law that goes into effect immediately, signed by Governor Ron DeSantis today. Yeah, Democrats are calling it a sad day and say the law is unconstitutional. The new law and order measure has been hotly debated since the governor announced his support last September. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was surrounded by law enforcement during today's bill signing ceremony in Polk County. Among other things, the new law creates a new crime Not a clip of, of him, mob I thought intimidation. It, was. it enhances riot-related penalties, and it makes it harder for any local municipality to defund police and reduce spending on law enforcement. I think it's really remarkable if you look at the breadth of this particular piece of legislation. It is the strongest anti-rioting pro-law enforcement piece of legislation in the country and there's just nothing even close the law also makes it a felony to tear down statues or monuments the democrats are upset and <laughs> state representative angie nixon from jacksonville joined the state's top elected democrat agriculture commissioner nikki freed at a news conference at the capitol i am so heartbroken by what i saw happen today 
didn't necessarily want to speak, but um, super upset about this bill. No, it sounds like <laughs> Edwin, <laughs> colleagues and saying super upset about, about this bill. Out of office for not defending freedom of speech. My we God. know <laughs> that this bill. Was by <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> Clearly, it's mean. There's a group in the state legislature is racist. Uh, that felt that they were about to lose power. Florida's Democratic Party chairman took aim at Republicans, too, saying it's a sad day. Criminalizing peaceful protests is unconstitutional and a violation of our civil rights. This won't age well. Now, the governor and his supporters, like state CFO Jimmy Petronas, say it doesn't suppress free speech. Rather, it protects property and owners. Here's what Petronas said on This Week in Jackson the last month. As people are if jumping on cop cars. you want to come and demonstrate and express your concerns and do it in a peaceful manner, God bless you. That's what this state is all about is allowing your opinions to be voiced and heard and no place better than right here in Tallahassee. But if you decide to hurt somebody else or damage somebody's property, Pause real you quick. know what? That okay, I, I highly advise y'all to find the full clip of Governor DeSantis, uh, him speaking himself using the Trump manu mannerisms, right? Yeah. He's doing the hands, you know, he says, <laughs> um, he's, oh, I love this part. Okay, hit it. You ready? You see the Trump hands? I see I it. I love this part. This is what he said. He said, you will no longer be allowed to walk up, get in people's face hmm. that out there eating, and you just getting in their face, harassing people when they're out there just trying to eat. They, they didn't bother you. They're minding their business. Mind your business. He's like, you're not going to be able to get in people's face and start screaming with a bullhorn, acting a fool. You mean I can't walk into a restaurant and interrupt people's dinners or on sidewalk restaurant patios where they're eating and saying Black Lives Matter, science is violence and that well, kind of I, stuff? I think it's racist that he's trying to prevent people from put, putting a bullhorn in, in just regular people's face um, just out there minding their fucking business. And it's like, first of all, those people might be Democrat. Those people might have voted for Biden. Those people might be pro-black, uh, down with BLM. They probably got their pronouns in their bio. You don't even know whose face you're screaming in. I'm just all, trying to all, enjoy some dirty rice and some shrimp, damn it. Yeah, bro. I mean, how can anybody be for, how, how can you be for that? How, how can you not be against, like, he just said, leave people alone. Mind your business. If they not bothering you, we not going to let you bother them. It's a wrap. You can't go taking down statues. You can't go harassing people. That's just common decency. And my wife said this, it's a damn shame that this even has to be a fucking law. Yeah. Or it has to be a conversation. Damn, y'all simple-minded. I told this to somebody yesterday. It feels like, and this to answer your question kind of in a way, even though it wasn't a real question, is it feels like half of the country, like the two halves, live in completely different worlds inside of this country. Like in your brain, in their brains, they're living in a completely different they're world. They're following the wrong people, man. They following the wrong people, and they just believe in. <clears throat> they believe in that January sixth was an insurrection, not a protest or a riot. They believe that um, Trumpers killed a cop. I think some of these radio DJs owe me an apology. <laughs> There's a lot of terrestrial, terrestrial radio DJs that were like, Chingo, he, they killed a cop. This is what you've been promoting. Love. There's blood on your hands. They killed a cop. Okay. They did not kill a cop. And Texas COVID cases are down, whether due to oxygen or lack of testing. You fucking tell me. We ain't all died yet. Texas still here. Gracias a Dios. Standing strong. Um, baby Diablo, little homicide. Regardless of what your famous brown comedian is trying to tell you, he was popping off a gun. What happens when you pop off a gun in a residential area and you're 13 and you're out there with your homie? They're going to call the cops. You might get shot. You might get shot by the fucking somebody around you if you're in Texas. True that. Also, go back and watch the uh, Bill Maher clip uh, where he's basically saying, like, Democrats have an extreme fear of COVID. They're, they, they're disillusional. This, he's talking about his own side. Yeah. He, he's a Democrat. Make sure y'all go watch that. It was excellent. I just didn't like the part where he threw in the, the drink bleach hoax. But he, he was like, man, they're hating on beaches. And it turns out that beaches are the best place to be. We've been saying this shit since the beginning of the pandemic. And motherfuckers looked at me like a whitewashed wannabe coconut. Um, which are delicious, by the way. Coconuts are delicious. Hell yeah. And now you have Governor DeSantis having to make a common sense Common sense, common decency fucking rules. Here's real quick, since we're about to wrap up the show, a clip of a, a British pub owner kicking out a politician. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
not allowed in my pub. No, Lord. Wow. I'm not going to physically hurt him. That man. Those police are out of line. That's assault. I'm not bothering you. I think they're his bodyguards. Oh, okay. That man is not allowed in my pub. Get out of my pub. Oh, he kicked out a politician, right? Yeah. Get out it's of very pro lockdown. With a mask and shit. Get your pussy ass out of here, boy. Excuse my language, everybody. I'm worked up today. <laughs> so this politician, uh, he's a part of the, I believe it was called like the Labor or Labor or something party that is an equivalent to like the Democratic Socialist and is very pro-lockdowns. And it's not uncommon for politicians to go campaigning and, and doing speeches from uh, local patrons, you know, restaurants and, and businesses. This guy's like, fuck you. I've been locked down for a year. Like, I'm losing my life because of you. And they say, get the fuck out of here. And It's the biggest wealth transfer, man. They trying to kill the middle class. Target, Walmart, Amazon, Netflix, all these people are allowed to conduct business. All the politicians have not missed a check. They have not missed a paycheck. They're on the payroll. Fauci's the biggest paid motherfucker by the government. And they, they still telling you. They telling California. They telling Canada. They telling New York. Hey, man, it's deadly out there. Three masks. Don't go to the playground. Don't go to the beach. Don't do nothing. And then all the while, a lot of y'all calling me a sellout. So if you want to be pro-lockdown, you want to be locked down to infinity, move to New York or L.A. or California. Um, beautiful places, beautiful people. But it's a damn shame what their politicians are doing. What Cuomo, de Blasio, uh, Garcetti, Newsom, they ruining y'all states. And it's just a coincidence. I, I'm not, I'm not a, um, I don't even identify as Republican because I want to be as non-partial as possible, um, as possible, because I'm going to call bullshit wherever I see it. But it's a damn shame what these governors and mayors are doing. Meanwhile, you got Texas, Florida, Mississippi living free, showing y'all that it's hysteria. It's mass hysteria, and they're trying to kill the middle class. But what do I know? Go follow somebody else and uh, just take the uh, white liberals' word um, face value. Ah, oh, what a great episode, Chango Bling. Thank Shout out to so all the patrons that have signed up, joined the TIA, patreon.com forward slash redpilltamales. Uh, let's send them out. What's uh, something positive they can look forward to? Oh, man. Shout out to my homeboy, Lucky. It is his birthday hey. right, right now, 420. He's, Today's his birthday for real? Yeah. He just dropped a, a, a Christian album. It's very smooth. It sounds great. Um, the tracks that I've heard so far, they sound really, really good. His flow, the beats, his mix, and more than anything, the message. So uh, you guys, man, there's a lot of positivity out there. Um, continue to search for truth. Con continue to love your country, protect your family, and stand for what you believe is righteous. Uh, like Governor DeSantis having to put this common sense measures. We're not going to let you harass people when they mind their own business. So y'all be safe out there. Uh, please spread the word. Shout out to the patrons. If you have not signed up, patreon.com forward slash redpiltamales. And we will see you next time. Sass.